South Korea is expanding its defense export footprints beyond Asia, tapping into different continents with an aim to become the world's fourth largest exporter by 2027. From massive arms deals with Poland to the latest weapon sales to Saudi Arabia, Korea has shown remarkable growth in its defense exports in recent years. On this edition of Within the Frame, we look into Korea's burgeoning defense exports, its potential, and remaining challenges with a particular focus on the Middle Eastern markets. I'm Handan in Seoul, and joining me tonight is Kim Jun Mo, professor at Konguk University's Department of Public Administration. It's great to have you with us. My pleasure. We also have Muamun Gouda, professor of Middle East economics at Hanguk University of Foreign Studies with us. It's a pleasure you could join us tonight. My pleasure, thank you. All right, let's start with you, Professor Kim. The South Korean defense industry's balance of orders exceeded 110 trillion won, thanks to the increasing trend of defense budget worldwide. Could you first give us a snapshot of Korea's defense exports? Yes, uh, as you just uh, mentioned, the balance of orders for the Korean defense industry has exceeded 110 trillion won. That is about 80 billion US dollars amount. And after the uh, 2022 uh, massive defense contract with Poland, South Korean defense industry has experienced uh, remarkable achievements. For example, uh, last November, Saudi Arabia signed a contract to import uh, surface-to-air missiles, uh, Chungung, which is uh, comparable to U.S. Patriot systems with a size of 3.2 billion U.S. dollars, which is also comparable in size with the same missile by UAE two years ago, 3.5 billion U.S. dollar amount. Also, last year and this year, South Korean industry is delivering the initial batches of Polish orders including FA-50 jet fighters, K-2 tanks, K-9 Hoitgers, uh, rocket launchers, and others. Also, we are ex expecting uh, forest export of, of indigenous helicopters called Suryon this year. Uh, according to uh, SIPIRI, uh, Stockholm International Peace Research Institute statistics, uh, Korea marked uh, number nine in, in terms of um, uh, world, world uh, arms exporting countries because they are using five-year average statistics. But if we look at uh, more recent statistics of 2022 and 2023, uh, we are at the brink of approaching the number four or five seat among the world ex uh, arms exporting countries. Well, South Korea's growth in defense exports has captured global attention with uh, various countries zooming in, especially on uh, Korea's arms sales increased substantially in relatively a short period of time. And uh, Korea is now expanding its export frontiers beyond its traditional boundaries. And several high-ranking officials from the Middle East visited Korea this month to check out Korea's main military weapons systems. Of them included Saudi Assistant Defense Minister Talal bin Abdullah al Otaibi and Iraqi Defense Chief Thabit Mohammed Saeed al Abbasi. Uh, Professor Gouda, why do you think the South Korean weapons systems are gaining wider recognition from the Middle East? Thank you so much for this question. So what I did is that I started to read what uh, Arabic news media is talking about, how they are talking about Korean defense systems and military experts and all that. I think there are some words that were, was highly relevant and highly, I mean, uh, mentioned many times in this media outlets. So they're always talking about Korea's edge, high tech edge when it comes to weapons. They always talk about competitive prices of Korean's military defense. It's very competitive if you compare this to defense experts of uh, European countries and so on. It's tried and tested in the Middle East. I mean, uh, we, we have, uh, as Professor Kim mentioned, some history of sales to Middle East. So Middle East countries have tested Korean weapons. Also, uh, this is, I think, very important that military experts of Korea are invulnerable to changes in Korean leadership. Uh, so we don't have any turbulence when it comes to relationships between Korea and Arab countries. Uh, President Moon 
was uh, very interested in uh, sending Korea exports, military exports to Arab countries. And President Yun also have the same attitude, which is, which is great for Arab countries. Uh, also, there are other economic factors that, uh, rather than military factors, we, we know that Korea have helped UAE, it's al uh, nuclear reactor. We know that also Korea is involved in Yom City in Saudi Arabia. So economic factors also play a role. And the last thing is that uh, there is no extra agenda when it comes to Korean export of military to Arab countries. So there is no uh, political agenda, there is no humanitarian agenda, it's only economic, so it's focused on military, and this is, I think, very good for uh, Arab countries and Middle East countries in general. So uh, cost efficiency is definitely one important part that uh, that South Korea is enticing. That's why South Korean exports, uh, defense exports are enticing many uh, Middle Eastern countries. And you've also mentioned South Korea's contingency in its interest in the Middle East, regardless of which administration takes power. Uh, and also it has no extra agenda. So it does not politicize its defense exports yeah. was uh, one of your main points. And Professor Kim, the commander of Iraq's Army Aviation Command, Samir Zaki Hussein al-Maliki, during his visit to Seoul, closely examined Korea's homegrown utility helicopter, Suryon, which you briefly uh, mentioned. Tell us more about Suryon and what are your prospects for its exports? Yes, Suryon is the first indigenous designed utility helicopter by Korea Aerospace Industry and is now produced more than 200 units used by Korean Army, uh, Marine Corps, police forces and recently uh, it's used as firefighting uh, mission helicopters. Um, this is very cost effective and, if, uh, and, and reliable helicopter and I, I believe this here will make uh, a, a new momentum to see Suryon flying foreign skies. And meantime, we have additional uh, helicopter project by Korean uh, military called Light Attack Helicopter called LAH, and that's also promising uh, export item to be uh, to be built. And it's in early production stage with the Korea aerospace industry. So I, in, in general, I see a uh, promising uh, prospect for, for the export. Well, Suryon uh, has been suffering some setbacks in its attempt to uh, export uh, several units, actually large quantities of units uh, to different countries. So this is definitely some good news. Uh, Professor Gouda, Saudi Arabia is known as a major consumer, a huge buyer in the global defense industry. Why is Saudi expanding its defense purchase though? Is the growing threat from Iran-backed Houthi rebels also being considered? Definitely. I totally agree with you. Actually, I think all of us now see that uh, the ongoing conflict uh, in Yemen and all that is affecting all of us tremendously. It's affecting the global economy. Uh, so definitely the Houthi rebels and support by Iran is having uh, huge rebels uh, all along the global economy. Uh, if we look at the latest three years when it comes to Saudi budget, we see it's there is in 2023 was a 50% increase in military spending uh, in uh, in Saudi budget. Uh, so we're talking here about around $70 billion spending. In 2024, this represented around 21% of total expenditure. So this is a substantial amount of spending is given to defense systems. Uh, the interesting thing actually is that we have some new research published uh, last year on why Saudi is doing this. Uh, so the researcher has investigated a relationship between Iran's integration into the global economy and Saudi defense budget uh, from 1990 up to 2020. And we see that the more Iran is integrated in the global economy, the more it's accepted, the less Saudi spending on the military happens. And the more Iran becomes more like a rogue state, more separated from the global economy, the more Saudi is more or less worried about this, so they spend more and more on defense system. So definitely Iran has a major role, definitely Yemen has a major role in Saudi spending, and I think now we can see that it's really affecting everybody now. 
So the Houthi rebels, definitely one of the f major factors. Uh, and so Saudi has been uh, substantially increasing its defense uh, budgets in recent years. That definitely is noticeable. And all this as Iran's as well as Yemen's integration deepens. Uh, now, Professor Kim, give us an overview of the defense industry market in the Middle East and the market's potential for South Korean companies. Yes. I can uh, summarize that uh, in three points. First, the size of the market. According to the SPIRI uh, data, uh, among the 40 uh, major arms importing countries, we see major importing uh, nations uh, located in Middle Eastern areas, like, like Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Israel, Bahrain, UAE, uh, and others. They account for almost 30% of world's uh, arms import. Uh, so this, in terms of size, this market is uh, uh, quite large in the, for the industries. Second, uh, we see uh, Middle Eastern area uh, staying with conflicts in many uh, scales, in many dimensions. And what was interesting was whenever there are conflicts, these conflicts became test bed for new weapons and applications. So uh, for those countries in the Middle East to survive and to have better position in the next round conflict, they should be armed with better and proven weapons. That's why uh, Middle Eastern countries are very uh, uh, eager to, to buy additional weapons. For Korean defense industry, uh, they have strong incentives to participate uh, go there and get the market because by being selected in the uh, Middle Eastern market and they can prove their uh, technical capability as well as their cost effectiveness. Thirdly, Middle Eastern market is very uh, uniquely divided along international politics, which can be translated as, for example, country A can buy from country B, but not country C. So taking all this together as a backdrop, Middle Eastern market has been an open bazaar of weapons for a long time uh, for buyer countries and for, uh, for uh, seller, selling, exporting countries. Uh, perhaps which is the reason why South Korea is betting big uh, in the Middle Eastern market with its, uh, the region's huge potential. But Korea does face intense competition. Uh, coming from all directions, which leads to our next question. Dr. Gouda, what are some things Korean defense exporters must prioritize when tapping into the Middle Eastern market? What would be a smart strategy for South Korea? So, Professor Kim mentioned three points, and I will also mention three points, actually. First thing is that the Koreans should definitely keep uh, edge on their high-end uh, technology. Uh, may, perhaps many don't realize that defense industries is the key reason behind many high-end uh, technology that we are enjoying. I mean, if you look at DARPA, US DARPA, Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, from GPS to internet, uh, and so on. And Korea's decision to be the world's largest ship cluster of, by 2047 will definitely have a positive and significant effect on Koreans uh, and Korea's military industry. So definitely the high end tech uh, of Korea looks promising. I hope Koreans keep this edge uh, and their focus on high end technology will definitely uh, prioritize uh, military defense. So this is what number, was number one. Number two, the price competitiveness of Korea's industries so far is gaining momentum all along the Middle East. Uh, as I told you, I mean, uh, people in the Middle East, me, news media are always talking about that Korea's products are price and competitive when it comes to prices. So this is a very good point. And I hope by economies of scale, Korea could keep this uh, going on further. And the last thing, and I think the most important, is that Koreans so far have been focused only on business and not uh, getting involved in politics or any other agendas. And this matters a lot to the Middle East. We see now uh, problems between uh, Saudi buying weapons from U.S. and it's affecting everybody now. So uh, Korea's by keeping their uh, stance impartial, is 
keeping, uh, I mean, opening huge potential for markets in the Middle East. So those three things, if Korean companies can, can keep this, I think they have a huge potential in the near future. So Korea's high-end technology uh, definitely looks promising. Uh, and as yes. you've alluded to at the top, Korea focusing only on business and business only, no other extra agenda whatsoever. And that uh, factor appears to be enticing many Middle Eastern countries. Now, Professor Kim, South Korea continues to expand its defense export horizons amid rising geopolitical tensions. Korea inked a multi-billion dollar arms deal with Poland last year, as you mentioned, while also scoring big contracts with many other countries. What are your prospects for Korea's defense exports going forward? Yeah, uh, to start with, I'd like to cite uh, an epithet by the Roman general, Civis Pakim Parabellum, uh, if you want peace, prepare for the war. Uh, countries in Europe and Middle East are affected directly by recent wars. Uh, this has resulted in the increase of defense budget in, in countries, including Germany and Poland, and many others. So governments in, the, in those countries are opening their wallet and purse to buy additional defense capabilities. So in this sense, Korea's defense industry will, will be growing steadily. Uh, while at the same time expanding the regions, areas, and the, the range of products uh, they, can, they can sell. Um, so in that sense, um, we, we can see a, a relatively uh, promising uh, prospects for the Korean defense industry. Also, recently, uh, as you mentioned, Houthi rebels are increasing tension in the Red Sea area. Uh, Philippine-China tension in the, in the southeastern seas will also boost the demand for arms uh, globally. Uh, so the heightened uh, risks around the world is uh, leading many countries to substantially increase their defense budget, and this uh, is uh, is looking is 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 positive. Is looking very positive for uh, South Korea's defense exports. Professor Gouda, Japan is emerging as the dark horse in the global defense market. The country has recently eased arms export controls, allowing weapon sales to the U.S., and is also eyeing to export military vessel equipment to India. Uh, as Middle Eastern countries look to diversify their import channels. What more needs to be done by Korean companies to stay ahead in the game? That's an excellent question. Uh, definitely, I mean, we see that Japan is trying to, uh, to go to the Middle East uh, countries market and they're trying to gain momentum. However, to be honest with you, at this moment, I don't think they have what's, 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 I mean, what's needed. Uh, in order to do, to do this, actually. Of course, they have a technical edge, but I think Koreans have a more technical edge because we have to remember that Japan is selling patent uh, uh, weapons to the Middle East, like mainly the Patriots, patented by the U.S. and so on. So this creates some sort of a link between Japan and U.S., and Middle East countries are, I think, worried about this somehow. They don't want to be linked too much to the U.S. because of the changes in U.S. policy. We see the changes between Trump and Biden. It affected tremendously uh, uh, military uh, sales in the Middle East. So I think Middle East countries are now worried so much about this. They don't want to get involved again. This is number one. Uh, Koreans are, uh, from what I understand, are very much involved in the Middle East nowadays. And from what I also know, that they are trying to perhaps make customized weapons from the Middle East. Uh, so they are uh, having a proactive policy towards the needs of the Middle East. One last point we, we shouldn't uh, uh, forget is that we have to remember that Mohammed bin Salman, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, visited Korea in 2022, and he was supposed to visit Japan as well, but he canceled his visit to Japan after his visit to Korea. And we have to remember this was the biggest amount of uh, agreements between Korea and, and Saudi Arabia. So this cancellation of the visit to Japan have, I think, uh, it sends messages that uh, Saudi Arabia is not perhaps 
very much interested in Japan anymore. It's more interested in Korea. And we see this relationship in Neom. We see this relationship in many, in S oil. We see this relationship in other economic factors. So I think Korea doesn't have to worry too much at this stage from Japan. The cancellation of his trip to Japan certainly uh, spoke volumes, uh, didn't it? Now, Professor Kim, before we let you go, what are the remaining challenges in South Korea's path toward its goal of becoming the world's fourth largest defense exporter? Yes, I can mention three things. First, uh, Korea's defense industry should aim at U.S. defense procurement market. As the Middle Eastern market was important, so is the U.S. procurement market is, especially if uh, Korea's defense industry is accepted as the supplier for the uh, U.S. defense procurement market. That means the quality is accepted in the U.S. and also it will open other uh, new markets. So it will be a, uh, certainly a plus factor for the Korean industry. Secondly, uh, we need some sort of control tower to orchestrate all the important decisions because we, we may have conflicting goals at domestically as well as uh, politically. We'll, have, we'll need to uh, establish a control tower in that sense. Thirdly, uh, very recently, Korea's National Assembly uh, revised the Export-Import Bank of Korea law to increase credit limits that can be given to uh, foreign defense uh, uh, buyers, including Poland. So providing uh, sufficient financial resource, including loan guarantees and credit limits, will be a great uh, avenue to cultivate. All right. Well, hopefully South Korea will continue to steamroll towards its goal of becoming one of the world's biggest defense exporters. Thank you so much, Professor Kim and Professor Gouda, for sharing your perspectives tonight. Yes, I really enjoyed. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And that brings us to the end of the show. Thank you for watching. And be sure to tune in same time tomorrow to join our conversation. Goodbye for now.